Brick City is the, the best program there is. It's educational and it's fun. We do stuff with our friends, making friends and stuff. I like working with Brick City because I like working with other people. I'm not staying home all day, watching TV. Brick City is like, to me, is like my friends and my family. One of the goals we always have is to teach the kids self-confidence, self-discipline, self-reliance, um, to show them that they can express themselves in a way that is natural to them and also that it's okay to step outside of their comfort zone and do something um, that's not something that they might regularly do but that is still kind of cool. This year we had a guest artist come in the first week, uh, the Carpet Bag Brigade, and they were fabulous. Stilters, dancers, acrobats, that first week they worked with the kids to create a miniature performance. The Carpet Bag Brigade is an interdisciplinary performance group that works with dance and theater and music. Yeah. Everybody get their yeah, hands in here. Get your hands in here. Get your hands in here. Ready? One, two, one. Keep that body tight. It's really fun, but I think it's just the way that they light up when they learn something new that's really exciting to watch. Nice work. How's that feel? I like doing the work by myself. What I'm hoping the kids get out of working with us is a sense of accomplishment, of having done something they've never done before, and it's a skill that they can keep using and take with them. Okay, ready? Stand up. Stand up. I learned a very new thing. And I, I thought I was never gonna do stuff like this. We've learned how to do multiple things on stilts. We've learned how to tie our stilts, how to run, walk, go sideways, go backwards. It's been really fun. We've played soccer, we've performed. <laughs> Isn't in Canada, rather in Mexico, 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 yes. What kind of things you learn in here? Uh, how to walk on stilts, how to how to share and all that, how to be polite to other people. Try stuff new, try things that you've never tried before. Give everything a chance. Learn how to get to know people better. Where do we start the story though? Because we can't be at the pyramid because we have to travel there. We start in New York. Or do we start in Cleveland? Yeah, in Cleveland. Okay, so we're going to start in Cleveland. Also what we do does re-emphasize uh, a literacy um, piece because at least when Jasper and I were structuring the program again this year, one of the things that we focused on was making sure that the kids are able to s tell the parts of the story. There's so many games. I know, but like when you pick it up, that means that. No, but like you, since we gotta, tonight. like, since it's like we have to travel to different places, I right. can be like pick up a book and it's a ritual that you The mafia is everywhere. everywhere. And that can be the ritual that they all have yeah, to, and then they that, have to circle around the diamond. We have a tongue twister that we've actually used in the past and the kids kind of latched onto that tongue twister. What it's gonna be about is the banks raise the rent so most people can't, they can't afford their houses anymore. So what Clevelanders do is they go to Canada and the Canadians tell them where to go. And they tell them to go to Popo Capital that's in Mexico, so to find the Great Diamond. Who do they meet that tells them about the diamond in the pyramid? Their cousin. He been doing a lot of research on this diamond that he found, that he found out in Mexico. Right. But they make a mistake and go to Canada because they're not that smart. When they find the Great Diamond, everybody is nice. 
even the banks that raised down the rent. They came up with, well, people are getting pushed out of their homes, which interestingly enough is actually happening at Lake Buteris, you know, something like 150 units are being closed. So, you know, as much as we can say, oh, that's so creative, it is actually something that they're dealing with. All the banks went back and tripled our rent. The banks all suck. The front. The banks all suck. You are not wild animals. I don't care who told you that you were. You're not. And I'm going to say it again, and I'll say it until the day that I die. No one has control of you but you. It's a delicate balance between disciplining them and keeping them focused on task, but still trying to inspire them to like this. Whoa! Yes, because oh. they're what? They're tall because of the stilts! Right! Okay, so we see them and what do we do? Whoa! Okay? It's very challenging to develop the respect that you need and the discipline from the children. A lot of times they come into the, a program like this not having that. The challenges of, of inner city youth are, they're just so great. I mean, I can't really imagine having to share clothes amongst a nine child family and, and then being responsible and coming here every day for two hours. Like this. And then we spread back out. Yeah. Spread back out. Okay. And let the ninja fight. And then we start walking around and start doing the and I think one of the things that we're bringing them right now that's important as well as the responsibility is attentiveness so that they can be, they can ask questions, they can experience this playfulness, this creative liberation with us, which provides them open time for them to just be. And then that being will inevitably, hopefully, choose, they'll choose to be themselves rather than go down different paths of self-destruction. You know, and, and that's the most common path I think that they are shown. So we offer them just the absolute opposite, love, pure love. Because we come in as a snake, we come in as one big machine. Okay, so get, no, do like, be tough. There's definitely been a, a change in attitude, in, in how they react when they first walk into a room or when you first walk into a room. Now it's all high fives and hey, how you doing, Erin? All right, good to see you. And whereas, you know, before when we first started, it was kind of like, who is this guy? And, and why is he trying to tell us to do stuff? They're much more open and they're not afraid to, you know, put line up touching each other, you know, to, to form one big uh, choreographed line and then do kicks. They're understanding how the different settings of working in groups works and um, how, uh, how to be more adaptable to that. Their will and their discipline when they exercise it is absolutely amazing. It feels like when you do something, it feels like you're doing something new. You keep on trying and trying and trying, you got it. Step, 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 There's a change that takes place in the instructors too. Just a, a gradual, I guess, developing of that bond, that trust, that friendship that you know hey we're learning something together all right this guy can teach us some cool things we got to respect him and we move on from there and so we develop a, a fun friendship it's so much fun you know it's so much fun even the fact that we got to keep them organized and orderly which they just unconsciously resist to but when it happens when those moments of beauty and and coordination all happen it's it's amazing you know and everybody is affected by that It's more than about just teaching them to walk on stilts. It's more than about teaching kids to put on a show. It's 
it's developing all the skills around those things that you need. Uh, the ability to listen to someone who's trying to help you. The ability to focus and work as a team together towards a goal. And that's stuff that can be very foreign to a lot of these kids. And uh, so we spend a lot of time just trying to develop those skills in order to get to our further goal of putting on a great show. When they have a good show and the audience claps and their parents are so proud, that's what they remember. And, and I think that's always a goal, you know, to make sure that they have a good experience. Are we doing it on the street? No, you're going to do it on the oh. stage, but you're going to do what you've rehearsed. Okay? The only thing that'll be different is that I'm going to be a narrator, kind of. So, so I'll say stuff like, and so the Clevelanders yes, journey so to, right, to Canada. Like, like, All right? It's a little nervous, but you get over it and you just got to, everybody got their own techniques about how to uh, not think about the crowd. What's yours? Uh, somebody told me to think of people in their underwear. Does that work? Yeah. <laughs> I get a little shy a little bit, and then when I just come in the front, I just begin pumped and like just start doing flips and stuff. It's actually fun. I was a little scared, scared the first time because I was about to fall, but not no more. It's really interesting performing in front of people. I think it'd be great to do. Yeah, why? Cause they. They give you compliments. It's just going to be a great play. It's full of action, adventure, songs. It's going to be a really good thing. You know, the performance will be what the performance will be. The, the journey has really been us getting to know these kids, having them trust us, and then building on that trust and building this piece, which is really just our interaction deeper and deeper, you know? And so they'll walk away with this, with at the very least the memory, which will hopefully inspire them as they move along their path towards finding, you know, who they are. It went well. I think it went very well. Yeah, he was it was so fun. Good. It was a great oh, experience. Oh. It was a good experience, for real. It was fun and interesting. It was fantastic. It's speechless. It was fun up on that stage. Yeah, it was fun. I thought the show was great, and it was fun. We get to show off our talent, and all. it was awesome. It was great. It was fun. I hope this comes back next year because this is the greatest experience of my life. Brick City 2006. Well, Brick City for me is like it's very good for activities and activities in the summer. It was not really much to do for you, and it's really a great and awesome place. I think it helps you get along with different kind of people you've never met before. It helps you get along with people from the west side, people from the east side. It doesn't matter where you come from. It's been great. I'm glad that we're able to be involved in things like this, that the community is going to be able to do other things with different people in different communities. I believe art can change lives. Yeah. Art changes lives. Art's therapy for lives. Art is everything. Art is all of life. Every change that happens in somebody's life, every, uh, every time they move in a different direction, it's their own choice, I believe. And I believe that art can be a great catalyst to make somebody want to change their life for the better. My favorite part is learning new things, stuff that we didn't know before. When I learn something, I never forget it. So I know I will never forget being here at Brick City. Brick City rock.